Great. Good. Are we, I think we're ready. Good afternoon. Yes, yeah. it's uh, getting to evening, my friend. Hello, everybody. Hello. We are back, Fred. How was your day? It was fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it is uh, springtime here at Weimar, so we are uh, a little too on the busy side. We don't get to talk almost. No, you know. It's usually at 11 o'clock at night over a quick tap. <laughs> with a beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it is. Um, we looked back a little bit here, Fred. It was uh, almost a year ago that we we started to do this. This is, was pretty neat. Just one year. Yes, just one year. I know, I know. I looked back at some pictures. It almost looked like, oh, we looked young then. But I don't know. That's what, that's what 2020 did to us. I think so. <laughs> it aged us a couple mm -hmm. of years. So, But, uh, yeah, it was good. We've had uh, a lot of... Uh, uh, we've enjoyed these uh, mm -hmm. programs quite a lot. Uh, we connect with a lot of people, and our staff is enjoying it. And, and uh, yeah, we, mm -hmm. we're having a good time here. So uh, it's been a highlight for the 2020. And now we continue doing them. That's Maybe right. not as often in 2021, mm -hmm. uh, but we are going to keep going here. I, I, you know what I find? I saw, I looked back, the, the first one we try to squeeze in six or seven wines to taste. <laughs> I, we that was rather ambitious. Free. Yeah, we don't, we, I don't think we did it. We, we uh, appreciate everyone's feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, we are getting all kinds of feedback. Very kind and positive. Mostly kind. Mo yeah. yeah, mostly kind. But, you know, they are, people are coming now to the tasting room and they're saying they're enjoying these things. And, uh, you know, they're in the different part of the spectrum. Some mm -hmm. people say, hey, great. Fred is, I, I understand Fred all the time. He's so thoughtful. He, mm. I think, and then someone's like, I, I don't know what he's saying. Thank <laughs> you very much for translating. Uh, and, then, so, and then some people have said, Oscar, you're talking too much. Yes. <laughs> yep. so, yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it's, um, it's good. We appreciate it. Um, uh, I think uh, I'm glad that people are not holding back. Uh, mm. But uh, I think... Uh, some people, I should be nicer to you, but some people say I don't. So. No, it's, it's fine. I, I'm, I'm good with it. Uh, <laughs> but also as people saying, thank, good, thank God it's a drinking program. <laughs> so they don't have to listen to us. Uh, but we'll take, we'll take uh, the feedback seriously, but also with a grain of salt, since they're so polar opposite. And uh, we'll move on as we do, right? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if we're even capable to do any changes. You and no, me. I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> that might be it. Um, but one thing that we all agree with is that we don't get to the actual tasting of wine soon enough. So, in the spirit of spring, and in the spirit of early spring, mm -hmm. and in the spirit of rosé, and soon to be summer, mm -hmm. let's drink some rosé. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's start. So, for you who uh, ordered our spring release pack, and for someone who have visited the tasting room over the last, I believe, two weeks or so, we have released our 20. 20 rosé, which is, uh, you know, again, going back to 2020 to remind people about the vintage, it was a dry, very dry, warm, a and late, not the... A late, a late start. Late start, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something we can talk about if we look at mm -hmm. what, what spring is doing to us this year. My goodness, we are almost f four weeks, are you saying three, four weeks ahead? We, we are exactly four weeks ahead of last year. So four weeks being, um, I usually base the season off of the cherry trees here. And mm -hmm. so cherry trees in 2017 had bud break, um, uh, showed flowers on the 17th of April. Mm -hmm. Last year they showed flowers on um, the 11th of May. And this year they showed flowers on the 11th of April. April. Yeah. So yeah. this makes this makes the wine world rather interesting. It does. Um, you you know, say interesting. I, interesting. I, I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, Elabor uh, elaborate uh, on that interesting part. No, no, but it's um, <laughs> you know, of course, we're happy that spring arrives. Yes. Early in in many ways, but it's also rather challenging, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, we are looking at uh, the danger of a frost coming mm -hmm. in uh, to this for the next gauging for the next three four weeks. I, I think our clothing actually uh, 
I know. I know. Yeah, I, I, I commented season. on you. You have a winter jacket I'm, or whatever it is. You want to do a winter jacket. I'm winter. trying to promote cool. spring flowers. Oscar has a flowery shirt on. He's thinking of roses and sunshine. That's right. So <laughs> that's, that's where we're at at the moment. But I think going back, let, can we, let's, you see we lost track already. Can we just foc let's focus okay. on this wine, the yep. 2020 Rosé. Pinot, 100% mm -hmm. Pinot. Yep. Um, hmm. I am enjoying this a lot. Mm -hmm. The aromatics is stunning. Very, very aromatic wine. Mm -hmm. Maybe more so than any other vintages. Is this a vintage character mm -hmm. or what is it that um, well, it's I, fresh? I think th there's a freshness to it um, that I don't want to say that our maybe the last five rosés have lacked. Uh, I, I don't. I don't mean that. It's just a different profile. It is, and this this is going against each other. But it's it's really ripe strawberry, mm -hmm. um, and yet the palate and the profile is is really tight. And maybe that is on the dryness of it versus mm -hmm. maybe the last four or five vintages where there's been a little bit more sweetness. And, and part of that is balancing out the acid. This is softer acidity than, um, certainly than the 19. Mm -hmm. So so you're saying, going back to, you know, that when we talk about Gewürztraminer, mm. like when mm -hmm. the acidity is off, you ferment, have to ferment a little driver to perceive. So the dryness, actually, I get that. Not only acidity is actually a very dry wine. It's a dry wine. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So uh, what I like about it is, is that really, fresh ripe strawberry in other vintages when we're picking pinot early for sparkling and for rosé sometimes the pinot can cross over into cherry like a really cherry nose and the strawberry is kind of in the backdrop this is um i think that might be where you're seeing a, a different f difference from the last four or five vintages yeah. but i think the aroma is beautiful i yeah. think it's it's a very textural wine something that um you know, Dylan, Brianna, and I have, have worked on a lot of, mm -hmm. um, over a number of vintages of building in texture into all of the wines, starting with the Rieslings. Um, but um, I think it's a very textural wine, which, yeah. is, which is exciting. A more complexity yes. than most mm -hmm. vintages. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's fresh. It's good. You know, some of that texture can come actually from using the press Pinot from the sparkling production, mm -hmm. because as you press longer, you're going to get a little bit more uh, tannin to it um, and a little bit more of a red wine feel. Yeah, I was just going to say, is it tannin that, that I'm yeah, picking up? Okay. I think that shows on, on the mid palate. Yeah, this has been very popular for people who've been here for the last two weeks in the tasting room. My goodness. I don't know if it's just because it's rosé or mm -hmm. if it's, I mean, it's very popular. It's mm -hmm. great. Nicely done, Fred. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Yeah. Um, so, but let's see, let's see today, what we're trying to do, we're going to talk a little bit about spring work. Mm -hmm. We have Neil, who's uh, doing our videos here. He's been capturing you on the grafting bench. Mm -hmm. And we are also going to see a little video of Taste doing a pruning 101, uh, which is going to be cool. Uh, because spring is such a very active time here. I mean, it's no more, it's not more active time, maybe October. But there's just so many things going on at the, at the farm right now. We are doing, you know, just the fermentations who's gone, you know, a little idle and slow in the winter. They take off. So mm -hmm. we have to monitor all the ferments. We have to, we do the last riddling, you know, when we do that when it's cold outside. Mm -hmm. Are we grafting going on like crazy on the grafting <laughs> side? Your work, tying. Tying. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We had a flowers. We had a Zoom meeting with Steph about flowers. Right. <laughs> I mean, we, we're, yeah, I think it's a little bit of a non-stop at the moment, which is, it's extremely exciting, but uh, wineries are, it's, it's an uh, intense time. But it's, it's a very different time than, than harvest. So yeah. October, it's, it, you know, everyone is focused on picking, processing fruit, sorting fermentations it's it's really angled into from the vineyard into the press pad into the into the cellar here we are all over the map i mm -hmm. mean like you said we're grafting they're fixing posts they're tying over there um that that's just one set one that's two teams of of everybody who's working with us doing uh, two things it 
the retail staff is going like crazy. I mean, yeah. it's, there's a uh, lot going on. Yeah, it's great. Um, I wanted to tie back to, because we had some questions about spring and, and spring frost, why Fred is not so excited about spring as the rest of us. Mm. Um, so what happened is that the danger we're in is to get some potential if the bud comes out early and then we get this cold weather. Mm -hmm. And Neil, I don't know if you're able to show some pictures. I, for, for some people might have seen the, the news, whoever follow wine news, you see dramatic pictures from Burgundy, mm -hmm. Chablis, and even uh, down in uh, these, Neil, you have that picture there, great, just fires across these that's pods amazing. of... That's amazing. Uh, and that, the reason why they are there is to create airflow and heat so to protect the buds. Neil, do you have some pictures on when our vineyards here, uh, I believe it was in 12 or 19, that's, that's, that's a picture. 2012. 2012, I remember this is end of April, I believe, when we had also an early spring, so what happens, the buds comes out, and then you get these dramatic drops mm -hmm. of temperature going down in the 27, 28, and that could really damage the vines, damage the buds. Mm -hmm. And what happened with that buds then? They, they, the buds, they will freeze and burn off, if you will, that way, and then a secondary bud might come out? What yeah, is it that it, actually we're worried about? It, it actually, it really depends on where in um, the bud break you are or where in the growth you are. If mm -hmm. you have shoots out, mm -hmm. um, it can be, you can get a light frost and still have a crop. If, if you have a heavy frost, it, it can burn, literally burn the shoot all the way back. And then you might have buds that come out of that, a secondary or a tertiary bud. If you have just initial green in, in bud break, you can have frost that gets down into the bud and burn it right away. And then you, 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 you won't have any crop. And okay. so uh, what Burgundy, well, a lot of France was really concerned about and, and ended up having significant amount of damage was um, frost, sustained frost and multiple days of frost coming in when they, their shoots were out like that. Okay. So it's hard to tell. I think a lot of producers are, are going to react like, yeah, I had 50 to 70 percent loss um, of crop. It's hard to tell how the vines will react when the shoots are out like that, mm -hmm. whether they're going to throw more shoots, um, more buds, or whether um, that's it for that bud, that cane. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, th there's still a lot of unknowns until you get further down the road. Um, for us, at this point, with buds just swelling, we don't have full bud break yet. It's um, still protected. Is it's still protected. Okay. But, you know, so that's why I'm wearing winter clothes, is to help <laughs> project cold and cool air. But that, you, you, you know, we're going to get another five days down the road, and we're going to see Chardonnay out, and we're going to see Pinot out, and you're going to see green tissue. That's when you start really worrying yeah. and the dramatic picture of, that was Magdalena with the with the uh, fires burning. We, we you have a cold local night. farmers to get hay bales. Yes. They bring out hay bales yep. and we torch them in the middle of the night. And and then we we get the sprayers out um, to to help move air. We have our windmills, uh, our fans here at the winery. I mean, it's it's you you're on call mm -hmm. um, all the time yeah. to to help protect the crop. Yeah, so that's, that's, yeah. So that's going on. That's going on. Give <laughs> <laughs> me more morbid news from you. <laughs> yes, sorry. So, no, I mean. Give me drink if you want. Let me drink some. Thank God we have rosé from 2020 because we might not have it for sure. Right. So. No, but I think that's a, that's, you will hear that from all the other mm. orchards, mm. apple farmers mm. and so forth. Everyone's a little concerned now this spring. The next 14 days looks okay. I believe someone said we're dropping down to 33 here in next week. Yep. Uh, so, all right. It is what it is. That's what, what it, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. It's, I'm still promoting spring. I that. know you uh, are. <laughs> so, okay. Is it possible to get, we, we made a video of you grafting this week. Yes. I believe Thursday, Wednesday, Neil made a video which had some, uh, where you're talking, explaining a little bit what you do. I don't think, 
a lot of people have not seen now what actually grafting is. I know we had a grafting episode last year. We showed some, but uh, Neil, we're able to capture you, Fred, when you're in the zone. So now we're going to visit a new character. It's the grafting Fred. It's not the harvest Fred. <laughs> I, I, I just I learned of this character. I don't think week. you've seen the clip. I saw, the, I saw it when Neil made it. It's charming, anyway. Um, so, Neil, is that possible for us to get going with that clip of Fred grafting? And then maybe, Fred, you're, I know you're talking in the video, so if you put that on for whenever you want here, Neil, um, and then we can hear what you're saying. So, again, for, for people who are on Instagram, uh, I'm afraid you won't be able to see this, but you can log into the Facebook account. And so. Show you the delicious. Yeah. <clears throat> Tell my Instagram friends I'm sorry that you're not going to see Fred in this little cave. <laughs> but we'll, we'll put it up on the Yeah. <laughs> You know, the, these pictures, I'm, no, these are can't. like dreams, like, what? You're talking in the video, I so know. I that out. Okay. thought process yeah. of grafting. Yeah, so. Oh, okay. nice. Are we muted? Are we good again? Okay. 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 <laughs> so th those are actually, those are all finished vines. That's after a season of growth in the field. Everything's been harvested and graded and ready to send off to wineries and vineyards or for us to plant. Um, That's right. There's another, there's another two cycles of the, yeah. this two cycle of the nursery you know, the ones we're doing for next year and the one we're preparing for we're, this year. That's right. So, Fred, that was a wonderful video. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, after the vid after this video was made, there were a lot of jokes about me sitting... Uh, <laughs> reflecting on Reflecting on life. On life and you know what's funny? <laughs> I don't know if, if, if Neil... Uh, I don't know if Neil... You know, he didn't... You didn't turn to the camera once. He's like, it's just, and even, I, I noticed that there was some voiceovers, and even there, there was rhythm in the, you were, you were, you, <laughs> you know, I, I've it's grafted, I, I, I've grafted since, Herman first let me graft in 2003, he, he wouldn't let me graft for two years, so the first two years that I worked here at the winery, I would just cut buds and debud rootstock, and, and then finally he let me graft, and Herman would, would say, Fred, this is my therapy. <laughs> uh, I, I had no idea what he was talking about. Like, <laughs> therapy, I don't know what you're talking about. But like, I would go talk to him and, and he would like dismiss me. Like, yeah, yeah, mm. And that's it, like that's <laughs> all the information I would get. Like, <laughs> talk to me at the end of the day, yeah, basically. It was like so <laughs> now I'm sitting grafting and, and you know, th there's so much 
thinking, you have, you have plenty of time yes. in the course of eight hours of doing what I just did in six weeks to reflect on yeah, things. You know, it, things. it reminds me of like a, a documentary. I, I, I can't remember if I was it when I saw it, but and I'm probably making up a few things here just to make a point. Okay. But, you know, uh, you know, you have this like family from northern Lapland and you left up in north and they like making weaving fishnet out of reindeer leather and they sit in the little yurts and look out and hoping that the snow will melt <laughs> for five months and then reflecting over things. This is, and, I, and I, then I see, I see this, that's it, like you see there. Like, so for anyone who's trying to get, I think Fred will reply on your email, this is, this is what he's doing. This is what I'm doing. <laughs> this is what I'm doing. But I mean, <laughs> the, the, the process of, of it, grafting. It's very meditating. It is very meditating. And you hear the clicking of other people's grafting machines. And, you know, so, I mean, this kind of does get us into the, the next part of our discussion of, of working with other varietals. It seems like a big leap. But as, as I'm sitting there grafting, I've, I've been grafting for a, a while, I remember talking to Herman at some point, maybe not during the process of grafting, but at the end of the, the day, about uh, other varietals and, and, and how do you get to that point of working with other varietals rather than, you know, being, you know, saying, hey, we're working with a lot of Riesling. Well, what's the next step? What, 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 right. are, what are the next varietals that you're going to work with? Sitting grafting gives you a lot of time to, to, <laughs> to ponder that. Is that um, why you come out? Three weeks later, you have all these ideas. Oh, and I haven't, have to change um, and haven't sh shaved. Uh, you know, <laughs> my hair is off to the side. Yes, that's why. Um, but you know, as you're seeing grafting and thinking about materials that you're working with, mm -hmm. um, it gives you time to reflect on where our vineyards are. Um, are have we planted the right varietals on the right sites? Are we working with the right rootstocks? I mean, th there's a lot you can think about in. In, yeah, in but also go, go back to the actual grafting. If people look okay. at the video, you see that you're making sure that you have the right <coughs> thickness or size of the bud versus the root yeah, stock. That, that's in actually, order to, that is just a feeling. Thing. That's a feeling. Okay, just, and the reason why you want to match them up is? B because the, the, um, the closer they are in diameter, the better results you have will it's have. It's a take thing. It's a take thing. It's it's a it's a the better results you're going to have. The be, the more plants you're going to have at the end. So if you have really small material and really big material, you your take With a pen and a cork. You know, <laughs> I have to use what I have here. <laughs> no, it's the, perfect. They the, made an offer. The, <laughs> then um, your take might go down, and, and vice versa. If your bud is really big and your rootstock's really small, your take. How many vines you have at the end will, will will go down. So that part is just feel. You're doing that based on on feeling. What I'm actually looking for is the quality of the bud that I'm taking. So in really big nurseries around the world, yeah. they don't care. Not they don't care. They're less concerned with the quality of the buds, mm -hmm. or or that um, what I was doing with my right hand, because they're grafting millions and millions of plants. We're grafting, I mean, we're grafting a lot. We're grafting around 350, 370,000 plants this year. I, I want to know, and, and what I was grafting there was actually HJW uh, single plant. So a single plant. What do you uh, mean by that? No, uh, like, like, of course you do a single plant. Is no, single no, plant. One, one selected plant from mm -hmm. the old vines of HJW that we've okay. selected for uh, specific characteristics. And we've taken okay. all the buds off of that plant except okay, what we're going canes, to tie. You're cutting the canes yep. and pieces, and, okay. and then we've we've reproduced that plant in a multiple of x number of times. So maybe so 100 times or 120 how times. How many cuttings do you get from a plant? It, it depends on how oh, bigger how the much. Plant is. Yeah. Okay. So so from one plant you might get 15 cuttings. On other plants you might get a uh, hundred cuttings or 120 cuttings. Uh, so, so the mother plant is yes. from Herman's original plant. Yep. Now almost 30, 40 years old. Yep. That you take, you take a long cane, you cut them in pieces, yep. the bud, and that is what you now And grab. you replicate that. You, you, you make, in essence, um, 50 different clones of that single plant. Okay. So, what I, what I was doing there was looking at the individual bud and saying, yep, that's good, and then grafting onto the rootstock. 
the, the act of, of how sizing see, it how up. How do you see how good the bud is? Um, so every bud has a, has a, um, a not a coating, but it has, a, has material on it. It's, it's called its cap. Okay. And if the cap is broken, your chances of that bud being viable are, are very low. And then, okay. So, right, so I'm looking at the quality of that cap and say, okay, yes, I should graft that. But the whole thing is you're, you're trying to, we're trying to graft at a speed, like. That was pretty fast, but you, you could do faster than that. Yeah, that was, that was okay. That was okay. So. Hmm. Yep. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's speeded up. Yeah. But, but you do to chunk, to chunk. I mean, what do you do in, a, in an hour? Um, I had this discussion with the grafting team. Everybody should be doing. Nancy is the fastest. Right? Uh, ever, 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 yeah. What does 600 do? to 800 vines per hour. Okay. Yep. That's, that's the rate. It, when the buds and the rootstock match, you, you can do 800 an hour and just, and that's, you start, um, you don't think as much during that. It's really just the action of <laughs> grafting. Right. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, that was good. I don't think people have seen that, uh, which is a cool, cool little clip. So uh, last, uh, last thing, when, okay. when, um, when people, when you visit us and you see the potted vines in the retail shop, yes. those are graphs from uh, last year that will be potted this spring and be Judge. in the retail shop for May, end of May, June, July, into August. That is our grafting business. We sell those plants not as potted plants, but as bare rooted plants to other yeah. vineyards and so wineries. So what, you what you're dealing with is dormant Dormant sticks. Material sticks yeah. that we will then propagate for a year yep. and sell next year. And then year. sell next year. So then we have yep. another part or parallel part of the nursery mm -hmm. is is then yep. the Nick last year's vines that are now in the cooler mm -hmm. dormant. And that's also mm -hmm. where this is overlapping a little bit uh, on the business side where you have this early spring you know, the producers down in Virginia and further south, they're like, we're ready to plant. Mm -hmm. So we're getting those plants out of the cooler and they get shipped down to uh, further south. Yes. So we're following the, the frost belt, wherever there, there's, a, <laughs> there's mm -hmm. a, and then that they pick up. So right. The further north <laughs> they go, we will, so we will, we will know. Uh, so just for, for reference, um, and, and anyone who is in the, the northeast, now you you'll know that you know there's green grass there's leaves out if you're in virginia maryland southern pennsylvania in new york it's still semi-winter hopefully for another two weeks but um <laughs> you know so the our nursery customers in north carolina virginia are all starting to plant this week and next week uh maryland pennsylvania is uh, a week and two weeks from now and then new york will start kicking in probably about the second week of May. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, yeah, it just rolls up the coast and here are your plants, here yeah, we yeah. go. <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting, yeah. cool. Well, thank you very much for a little insight and look on your Absolutely. meditation, Fred. We appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so, we have more videos. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, again. Wait, we, we should, can we taste a little bit first? Well, can we just at least taste the? But we're gonna, we're okay, gonna talk about fine. the Chardonnay. Yes. We're gonna, taste is gonna prune. Okay. Perfect. And he's gonna prune the Chardonnay. I think we could, if anyone wants to pour the, why don't we pour the Chardonnay? Pour the Chardonnay, pour that's the Chardonnay. right. Let's do the Chardonnay. So we, Good. Let's do that. Good compliment. That's, we have empty glasses, which is devastating. So, so this is the case. Uh, more, more things happening here in, in spring, because that's what we were listening mm -hmm. of today, was uh, pruning. The, we're at the end of pruning now. We just have a few mm -hmm. vines left mm -hmm. because of the early spring. Um, also, that is a little bit of a gambling. Where, when do you, what do you do with your pruning? Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to put a video on here with Tace, our vineyard manager here, who's also in charge of our biodynamic in initiatives here down at the HAW site. Uh, he's going to prune. So, Neil, if you want to put, put that on, um, uh, you will, you're gonna, soon going to see then... Uh, Taste can prune, and he will explain a little bit what he does. Yep. And then after, after he's actually going to talk on the video too. Mm -hmm. and then just, just for this is at the H A W Chardonnay, the the wine that we're going to taste next. Yeah. Um, this is this is yeah the wine the Chardonnay yeah exactly. 
So this is the, the biodynamic side. Mm -hmm. so, so, so Hi, I'm Thais, uh, okay. vineyard manager okay. from Wimmer Vineyards on the site, at the winery site. There he is. Uh, today I'm going to show how to prune a vine. So uh, this is the Chardonnay. Is um, so this is the yeah, first, so one of the first planting from Herman in the 70s. So what we want in this field is like Chardonnay two or three canes per vine with two trunks. So you can see this is a trunk and those piece of wood are canes. So I want the canes to be as close as possible to the center and as low as possible to those two wires because after the pruning is done, we are going to tie those canes onto the wire. So as you can see, this one is a pretty nice one. It's a long one and pretty thick. And also this one, but the problem with this one is a little bit too short. So what I'm going to do is to cut here, clean this up. I'm gonna do like what we call a spur. So it's like a small piece of wood with two or three buds. So you can see one, two, and three. I'm gonna clean up the cane. Make it long enough. So we are saving three canes, but we are going to tie only two. Why are we doing this? Is because there's always frost in May. So if we're losing buds on this cane, so we can always tie this cane. So this one, you see there's not too many canes, only one. So I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna do like spurs here, like on this side. So I mean like next year, there'll be one cane that we shoot out here so I can cut here and be able to use this cane to tie for next year. And you can see all the buds are pushing. We are pretty ahead on last year. So um, this cane, it's a very nice one, but we are way, way too high. So I'm going to cut it right here. Okay, and now we're just cleaning the small stuff. And voila. Bravo, <laughs> thanks. All right. That was, that was actually, a, that was a beautiful vine. Like, what yeah, 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 he did that there. Well. He got it all in balance. Well done. So, uh, again, for, uh, for us uh, home gardeners, back home here, what, maybe if we could clarify a little bit what Taste did uh, mm -hmm. there. Uh, can, you know, I, he talked about the spurs, he spurred mm -hmm. on a few occasions mm -hmm. in order to maybe bring a cane for next year. Mm -hmm. so, so when you prune a vine, you don't only think, okay, what does this year do? You actually have to think about what the next year might do for you. C correct, yeah. uh, your, your, your pruning is setting the plant up for success for the next 18 months, basically. So you're, you're, you're pruning away material that you don't want off the plant. You're setting yourself up for canes to tithe to set fruit for this coming vintage. But then, as you said, you're also setting the plant up for growth in the, the next year. Um, that's assuming everything about our weather is cooperating. If you have, if you have late frost, it can change that scenario. If you also have winter damage, um, knock on wood, that we have missed the last two years, your pruning, your tying is so much easier because you're pruning to what you want, what are live buds, rather than trying to guess what is live, what, is, what has been hit by frost, what has is, what is been hit by the cold spell. Right now, as, as we've pruned our vineyards, as we taste is, is pruning the last of the Chardonnay from HJW, um, just about all the buds that we've checked are beautiful and green and ready to grow. Mm -hmm. And that makes your whole spring work and into summer so much easier. 
you know, thinking back to 2015, coming out of the polar vortex, mm -hmm. you, we were pruning, but you don't know what you're pruning to. You don't know how many buds are alive, how many are going, are dead, sitting on that trellis that, that he was cutting into. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty thankful and, and, and happy with where we are in the vineyards. You're now, again, as we, as we said with the, the early bud break, potential early bud break, you set yourself up for this unknown for the next couple of weeks of are we going to experience uh, damage like the, the French so vineyards the, the have. So currently the healthy, the healthy buds are a result from a good 2020 a and a good winter uh, and a, uh, they come, come out of 2020 hmm. strong. Yes, and it's, yeah. it's, it's actually, which is interesting, it's actually two years of really very good viticulture, okay. very, very good decisions made by Tace and, and the vineyard team. It's also reflective of a, a really phenomenal growing season of 2020, mm -hmm. um, and then also a, a pretty mild winter. I mean, anybody in the Northeast will, will know, I mean, there was maybe one night here in the Finger Lakes that it, it got down to, to zero or, or just below. For the most part, every every varietal that we grow, every vineyard site that we have, will be will be fine mm -hmm. on in that scenario. So it, it gives you confidence going into your growing season that your buds are alive, that you can tie in a normal way, that you can crop the plant in a normal way. Um, it's just it's a very different scenario than again 2015 or even 2018. 18 was yeah. Yeah, so to, into 2019. I mean, we talked about this before how one good vintage affects us. For so many, for so many it's years. It's not only that we get mm -hmm. good wines out of it, it's yeah. the health of the wine that they're strong coming into next <laughs> vintage and so forth. It's, a, it's <laughs> kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, Tace mentioned something that, okay, you kind of trying to keep the plant tight to the center mm -hmm. and then tie them uh, mm -hmm. on the wires. Mm -hmm. And then he lead then a third insurance case for frost. Yeah, we, so we, are we, you gonna, are you, are you thinking now, mm -hmm. let's say we're, Hopefully not getting this devastatingly cold nights. Mm -hmm. Are we going just go and cut that off? Right. Or are we gonna leave it? Right. So that we call it a kicker cane. That cane is going straight up. The mm -hmm. other two canes are tied either tied flat or tied in a bow, depending on the varietal. Um, if we have, if we see that we have damage, typically that cane sticking straight up will not have damage because your frost is settling down. So kind of coming up from the oh, ground. Oh, it's even a, a height thing from it's the ground. It's a height thing. Yes. Oh. Yep. So that, that cane then can be tied down if we need it. Or if we don't need it, we'll go through and cut it off in another month or so. Uh -huh. Okay. So, yeah. So if we have healthy bud, okay, that's again back to the fundamentals of pruning. This is where you decide your yields. Mm -hmm. That's another discussion. You know, you, you but taste didn't really <laughs> say that, hey, maybe are, are you looking at 10 buds on one cane and 10 on the other and like, okay, this would... The balance of this plant with the soils and the site we're at will give X amount of clusters, y and this is what we're. Y yeah. is this all that goes through taste this it, line it, when it, it is. It is. I mean, it, it, this the wine that we're we're okay, tasting. Okay, we can now talk about the wine. That yes, we're that we, we should have been drinking. It, I Did think. Okay, I was, you know what, it's funny. I think about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I you know. This is a joke when I was, you know, it, it, you know, someone said, is it cold down there? Like, yes, yes, yes. You know, you know there's a joke to be on, yes. There is. That's, but I'm Swedish, so I can handle it. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, the, the, um, so the BioShare in 2019, thinking back to this vineyard, to where we were in 2019, um, this is the first, uh, the, the, actually the second vintage of uh, biodynamic uh, viticulture on this site. Is um, it, this is a brand new wine. People it is. People have not seen this no. label before. This is a gray label. <laughs> has a little, just for everyone's, if people are confused, we understand if you right. are. <laughs> <laughs> so th this wine is from um, the vineyard that Taste was pruning in. Yeah. Um, the vineyard was planted in 1977, 1978 by Herman. <clears throat> um, it's where a lot of our sparkling wine has come from. Any Chardonnays you've had from Weimar from 
the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and early 2010s have come from this site. Um, and we've transitioned it now to biodynamic farming. Um, this is the first official release of this uh, vineyard in biodynamic farming. Um, so it is 20% uh, barrel fermented, about 80% then stainless steel, and then blended back together. Um, I think... So, well, wait, did you ferment it in, in oak? 20% was fermented 20, in fermented oak. Fermented oak, not oak, okay. 80% was fermented in stainless steel, and then they remained in those vessels, and then we blended them together. Okay. I've probably been saying the wrong things in the tasting room then. Okay, I thought... Did you consult with me about No, that? no, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did no. you read the tech sheets? The tech sheets. Okay, the tech sheets is a no new thing. <laughs> because... <clears throat> As I was in the cellar, mm -hmm. I thought that we moved, that it fermented, more fermented in the oak, and then we aged it in, in stainless steel, or the opposite the way around. No. Okay, so you nope. kept it at 2080. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. So um, I, I think the, the aroma, the texture of the wine is very reminiscent of wines, uh, Chardonnays from this vineyard site, from uh, Herman, from from 15, 20 years ago, it's it's um, it's a little steely. There's there's some there is some mouthfeel to it, which I think is different from from some of the older Chardonnays. I think it's really a textural wine, again like the rosé, um, just really good pure fruit. It is. I have to say, this is delicious. I'm going to say very nice things about this bread because I might not be very nice with that one. I'm ready. I'm building up here. No, no, I'm just joking. Just joking. <laughs> no, I think, so you do not really pick up much oak in this wine at all. No, it was all neutral. Yeah, yeah. Neutral like the, the oak that mm -hmm. we're talking about is also, oak. so when we talk about oak, we talk about neutral oak. <laughs> the question that we're starting to have with our staff and also with Dylan, when um, we usually when we release a wine, we, we talk about... Um, Dylan explain or you explain on what we do. Usually we talk about, has it been fermented in oak or has it been aged in oak? And it's different where it picks up more oak flavors. And I think a lot of people were wondering, where does that, does that mm. differ? Different, like uh, usually mm. an aging in mm. oak mm -hmm. versus fermenting in oak. Yeah. What, what does that, does the oak character pick up more in one or the other? Can yes. Is it possible to even ask that question? You can ask that question. Okay, I'll good. give you a good answer. <laughs> the, the, um, the wood that you pick up is typically from the aging of, in that barrel. Sure. Even when you have a new barrel and you ferment, it, ferment in it, you won't pick up a lot of wood in that, mm -hmm. in that initial wine. You might pick up some tannin, but you won't pick up a lot of wood. But as soon as that fermentation is done, you're going to start having wood the profile of wood integrated into the finished wine. Okay, so when you're fermenting, you're taking advantage of the permeability of oak. Yes. But it really not picks up in Correct. the oak. Correct, yep. It's the aging that Yeah, okay. and, and I mean, uh, looking at this wine and, and how we're thinking through the, the biome is, is that these wines really shouldn't show any, any barrel. E even, even though, though there's 20, so, so this is so funny for, for the geeks out there, mm -hmm. when someone said there's 20% oak, or 80% mm -hmm. stainless steel. Like, you should really ask, was it fermented? Was it Correct. aged? Be because the Riesling... Yeah, you know, we the can make this very complex. But the, the, bi the bio-Riesling is also fermented in, in barrels. And you, you don't sh show wood in, in the barrel fermented Riesling because it's just not something that we're looking Didn't for. Didn't we have a fight about this? We did. Yeah. But I picked up oak in Riesling. Do you now? <laughs> d d the latest like recently. <laughs> <laughs> no, in the 17 I did. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, I thought it was 16. No. Yeah, sorry, 16. 16. 16. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, but so it was not only me. There was more people. Doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> let's move on to the Gruner because we have, we, we debated where to taste this in the. Are we completely done with the Chardonnay? I think so. Okay. We? Okay. Yeah. I was going to. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. it. I think it's just for people who does not have this. Uh -huh. I would, uh, for for uh, basic description of this wine, I would go in very like old world Chardonnay. Yes, I agree. Old world Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we don't want to 
you know, more Chablis than anything, a uh, cool vintage Chablis, you know, mm -hmm. like a, a nice, st the structure. Going back to the, I know it's not the same vintage between the Chardonnay, uh, the Chardonnay and, the, and, the, and the Rosé, but back to the structure. Like this, it's nice and dry and some, some really crunchy, crisp stuff mm -hmm. going on there. Mm -hmm. Those are very good. Thank you. Yeah. You are welcome. Good. Good. So, Gruner. So now... Why are we doing this again? Because we are going to not talk about Riesling. That's right. <laughs> and I mentioned Riesling about Once. 15 minutes ago. I and I, and you, I think you kicked me under the table. <laughs> Because we weren't supposed to mention Riesling. Let's try not to so Riesling. I think I mentioned before that our, our production was about 80% Riesling up until 2014. Mm -hmm. And now with me sitting, grafting, and, and contemplating the world, um, I, we have decided over 15 years, 10 years here to plant other varietals. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a long process to get to work into realizing the varietals that you should be planting, plant some plant a vineyard, plant a row, whatever it is, and then realize grapes and, and then uh, taste the wine down the road and come to a point where you believe that you made the right decision or the wrong decision. It, it's, a, it's a long process and it, it, can be, it can be rewarding because you've made the right decision. It can be kind of crushing that you waste, feel like you have put the wrong bridle or, or experiment on something that didn't work. It's just it's, I think it's part of the process of us evolving as a winery, as a region. Um, and I, for me, Gruner is just part of that. Gruner is a varietal that we, we started grafting in 2003, 2004 for other customers on the West Coast. That's and then right, from California from, and, and Washington. And then um, I said, Herman, why don't we plant some Gruner? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Did you catch him while he was grafting? I, I, I think I, I think <laughs> that was a, yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I don't know what that means, but now I, I think that's a yes. That was a yes. <laughs> so we planted this in 2009, um, the first block of, of Gruner. Um, we have since added to the block. Um, and we have other varietals that we've been working on. And this in, is the, this is uh, Joseph's site. This is Joseph. So, so yep. neighboring Magdalena, one of our warmer mm -hmm. sites. And, and the reason we put it there is it's the only site that, it's the only s area of Yosef Magdalena that have explo uh, exposed shale. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. else is more loamy, uh, round stone, quartz. Um, you move into Magdalena, you get into limestone based soils. This is an outcry of, of, of just crunchy shale, which is amazing. Um, and that's why we decided to put, put this here. Um, it's about two and a half acres of Gruner. And you were going to make a comment about this, and I can't wait to hear it. No, 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 no. I no, no, no. I, I, mean, I mean that in like a, a positive way because, because we have been tasting this, and we're like, wow, this is, this is different from all the other Gruners we've made. Yes. If I would like, I'm going to be kind. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to be kind. Is that you don't have to. You have to. No, no, I don't I have to. I'm, I'm trying, my friend. Okay. Just look at the reviews. I have to be kind to you. <laughs> no, but um, I think mm. if you look at our Gruner Weltliner history, mm -hmm. you know, we started in 09. I remember mm -hmm. we, and I think we weren't the only ones. There was, I know, remember yeah. uh, uh, Lamarode Landing. Mm -hmm. I put some Gruner in maybe a little before that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Frank, you know, the Frank family. Yep. We were a couple of wineries who were like, hey, let's, is the Gruner the next best thing? You know? Um, then, you know, Gruner as a variety is a very vigorous, very strong root system. It, it, it gives a lot of fruit. The plants are generally rather big. Mm -hmm. um, then we planted it in a very shallow soil, so we almost like held it back a little mm -hmm. bit. And I think it took the vines some time mm -hmm. to establish. And then we might have realized how that it wasn't that winter hardy. You right. remember that? Mm -hmm. We're like, what the hell is going on? Why yep. did we do this? Uh, and I think, I feel that we went through uh, almost same same roller coaster that we did with Cap Franc. Mm -hmm. Like we, like the, the the first plantings of Cap Franc, like a, it was a little higher yield, lower yield, too ripe, and then what do we do with with uh, 
Do we put it in oak and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. And I think over the years, I have been rather critical against that gruner. Mm -hmm. Maybe because we made a very serious gruner, like mm -hmm. it's concentrated and flavor, not the Someone said, um, I don't know what quaffable mean, but am I allowed to say quaffable? Sure. These things? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, like easy drinking, like you get a gruner from Austria, mm -hmm. but obviously there's a very super good, serious mm -hmm. thing there, uh, I mean, gruner. And I think we are, have been dancing around different styles over the years. So I know people who've been visiting the tasting room, like, oh, we love gruner. Well, and I was like, well, this is not the gruner that you, mm -hmm. if you, if you love Austrian gruner, this has not been the gruner that you're. But I think now, almost 10 years later, you know, or more than 10 years later, mm. it's finding itself. So I think this is one of the better ones. With 19, this is showing itself, it's, it's ready. But we've had a little bit of a roller coaster. There's some, some heavy, like, not heavy, but there's some big gruners, which is not really what people are used to. Right. In the, the, like, the 13 vintage, <laughs> was it the, we missed the vintage, right? No, we didn't miss the vintage. No, thir 13 was the first vintage. Sure, sure, yeah. Yep. And then you, you had the 16. So, okay, so, so I'm sorry. gonna bring this back to, thank you for giving your, Honest fi opinion. Finally, finally got the opinion on the wine. <laughs> was, <laughs> we, <laughs> it, I, I this, actually ended up saying it was nice. Wine, I know. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was waiting for you to get to, because <laughs> this wine I think is, is really a prime example of how we have worked with every other varietal, including Riesling, in terms of finding its own voice and its own expression and its own style, and having worked over many vintages, including, and this is one of the, the things that you were, you were talking about, was how young plants can be lots of growth, no growth, you, you, you're trying to find, it, it's, they're like teenagers, they're trying to find their way in, in the world, and um, th that can be very difficult to, to make wine off of in, in ter and, and vineyard and, and, um, and manage the vineyards. But at some point, those vines start hitting a, uh, a, uh, a consistency and a, a typical growth and a typical profile um, that you can start relying on. Finding themselves in the Absolutely. There's a lot of metaphors. There's there. a lot of metaphors lot. there. <laughs> but, but you can. This, this is very similar to how we worked with Blaufrankisch or Lemberger. This is how we worked with Cabernet Franc. This is how we've worked our sparkling program of, of trialing different things or, and then realizing that this style works or this style doesn't work. The Gruner has been on the same path. And I, I'm, I'm glad to hear you compliment the wine because we have been critical of our Gruner vintage to vintage. And part of that is with how we pick, how we, how we ferment, long fermentations, how we trial different things, whether it's in barrel, or whether it's in stainless steel, or early picks, late picks, you're, you're, you're meandering with the vines to figure out what is the best presentation for that fruit, that varietal on that site. And I think we're into, we've come into a sphere where we're really understanding this site with this varietal. Mm -hmm. um, you know, going back to the companion varietal, you know, we, we, I wasn't allowed to mention Riesling. We worked Riesling for a very long time. We, we you know, we, we make up to 14 different styles of Riesling. Mm -hmm. um, we have a good handle of how to work with Riesling from Josef or from Magdalena. Five years ago, when if you had said, "Okay, so how do you make Gruner off of Josef?" I would say, "I have no idea. Mm -hmm. We just we just don't know." And so it it takes a, several vintages. It takes a lot of vintages yes. to trial things. And now it tastes like you have an idea. Oh, that's great! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the the wine itself, I mean, fantastic aroma. No, it's I, steely. I it's it's complex. It's it is. It's uh, really direct. It is. Um, twenty twenty. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's probably the driest gruner that we've made. Mm -hmm. And one of the points of making dry wines, and, and this is how I, I think about moving into making dry style of white wines, is to make really fantastic, pull off dry style of wines, the fruit has to be spectacular. Mm -hmm. Whether it's Chardonnay or whether it's Rosé, 
Pinot for Rosé or whether it's Gruner, it has to be really fantastic. Mm -hmm. No, I, th I think, uh, again, going back to the same conversation we have with the Rosé and uh, Gewürz, I mean, uh, it, uh, mm. there's a structure in the dryness there, which is mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Again, very probably going to be pretty ageable wines here. I think, I think the Gruner um, will, will really age very well. Mm -hmm. I think w we have... Um, we have tried multiple pickings. Mm -hmm. Pick early, middle, late. We really decide on doing two picks. They're about two weeks apart. An early pick, really high acid, and then uh, a medium to late pick for this vintage. Um, we did a little bit of crushing the stemming, so some soaking to, to draw out some of those aromas from the skins. Now you don't usually do that with your Right. This is the second vintage that we've done yeah. it. So the first vintage was 2017. We liked it, but it may not have been the vintage to do it on. So, um, you, you know, again, you learn as you go and, and you figure out. In 17, there was some phenolics and bitterness. In yes. Was, yep. that, well, was that, is that because of the grapes? That was actually doing too much of too the much. crushing, the stemming, soaking. And so we pulled back to only do about 15% crush de oh, Instead soak. of putting the whole yes. batch yep. in a certain hours, yep. you just flirt with 15% of it. That's right. You flirt with it just a little bit and you, you, you know what you're trying to get to. You do that. We've honed in on this 15% that we're going to crush and de-stem. Um, and then the length of that is also really important because if you do it too long, again, you're going to get the phenolics yeah. into that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to bash the rest of the vintage. Mm. I think this is great. Thank way. you. Great. It's good. Nice lineup. Mm -hmm. um, great. I don't know if we have... Um, now, we, we talked a little bit about... Uh, again, I don't think we're getting there. I don't know how much time we have left. A couple of minutes? Only three yeah. minutes. Okay. We, we made it. At least we, we, we drank we, three we, wines. We, we, <laughs> we tasted three wines. Ooh, this is good. This In is one year, we, we've made it. We've made it. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of training. We actually went through the wines in That's time. right. That's so right. Great. No, but I was, I was going to ask you a little bit more about companion grapes, mm -hmm. why we do it, and if it's, if it's just like we have nothing else to do, or uh, is it just, you know, we're finding new terroirs as we're exploring, and we are with the cultural know-how, and we're finding sites that... <laughs> I mean, we, we, we've talked about this a lot right. of times, how we're changing everything. Yeah. And I think, you know, our nursery, our mother plants up north in Julia Vineyards have, I don't know how many varieties of hand, you know, from around the uh, mountain varieties around the world that we're mm -hmm. experimenting with. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you are now looking at Standing Stone. What do we do there with this mm -hmm. protected site when mm -hmm. we have this information? And so you'll see other varieties. Mm -hmm. Or... Yeah, so, so, and also, we talked about this before, uh, again, how does this help the recent production? And also, how do you make these ones? I think you, you will see our dry rosé and gruner being very, in a, in a Riesling style, we make this, make them in the same, do you, do you want to make them in this style, or do you want to, no, maybe, this, yeah, we have a minute left, this is too many questions. That, that was a lot of questions. Yeah, so but I no, no, you, you want to, <laughs> I, I think, I think to, to answer all those questions in, <laughs> in one in, sentence, in, in one sentence great because you we seconds. are, I look at Gruner, how do we make a, a Gruner in the style that is best reflective of that site, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't, it doesn't have to reflect a Riesling, it can be its own presentation and every varietal should have its own presentation. Okay. Yeah. That's a nice finale. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we are uh, getting uh, that we are ready. Yeah. Maybe the Instagram is already cut off. Uh, but hey, thank you for joining and we hope to see you here at the winery soon or see you back on on these live Facebook Facebook chats. I think we'll you we'll, Fred need to get the emotional, uh, you know, get over the spring here. So hmm. whenever the spring is over, we'll be back here, shall we? Mm -hmm. so we yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so the hurdle of the cold, potential cold spots coming. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Good. Thank, thank, you. thank you again. Cheers.